Hello, Lee. Hello, gentlemen. Thomas. Tomas. Greetings and salutations. It's a wonderful. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh geez man yeah you know what i actually i honestly didn't do that to be funny that was yeah there's it's no all good dude. There, there's no l in there there's no it's an incredibly common mispronunciation i don't know what the psychology behind it is but it's definitely real 
I but mean, you can't have a, a complicated last name and, and get all that upset. Otherwise, um, <laughs> you're gonna spend your entire life upset and I just don't have the energy for that shit. <laughs> I Twice this week, I got asked how to pronounce my last name. And, uh, and so, yeah, yeah. Between that and uh, being redheaded and fr having freckles, like there's, there's very little that, that uh, it's very hard to get my feelings hurt. Like I, I've gotten picked on my whole life. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I, I just increasingly don't even have time to, to have the energy to actually disagree with people about things. It's like, oh, you believe something different about this thing. I guess we're not playing together. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is, uh, as a side note, that is um, one thing that I have a uh, characteristic of uh, senior architects of principal architects that uh, uh, that I've come to mm, I'm not sure if it's admire or just have respect for their willingness so, uh, a few of them a select few are willing to uh, do a filibuster or to just um, put in the time it takes to convince every single last person and yeah I don't, I don't think my patience goes that deep uh, I mean, the, the successful ones don't actually try and convince every last person. The successful ones just figure out who has to be convinced and how much energy it's going to take to convince somebody. And sometimes they don't even convince all the people who are important because some of them just aren't worth the energy. And not convincing them is not going to be a problem. It's going to be an annoyance. Some wisdom in that. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, let's get to this. See if we can get the uh, meeting minutes formatted a little bit. Um, there are a couple of things probably to, to chat about. Um, Nic Nicolay and uh, Thomas, if you guys want to toss your names into the uh, onto the attendees list, that would be great. Cool. Um, so if you do have topics, now now is a good time to raise them up and toss them in there. Uh, you know, I've got got another one here. Hmm. with us and Mr. Owens is with us as well. All righty. Well, gentlemen, we're, we're about six after. Maybe we'll um, maybe we'll get up and going. So this is uh, Thursday, October 15th. This is the CNCF SIG network uh, meeting. We have twice a month. Uh, as a reminder of some of our prior topics and kind of the theme that we've had here recently, um, there's a lot, there's a lot that, to cover uh, in general of topics and projects that fall kind of within the charter and scope of SIG network, many of which I'm convinced that we're not uh, talking about uh, many, many topics that are uh, addressed in and around this meeting. And so uh, for my part, I consider that, that there's, there's some outreach that we might want to be doing to help change some of that. Um, there's recent in reach, I guess is the way of putting it, uh, from the Submariner project. Um, as they're 
uh, you know, I suppose thinking around the CNCF and what it means to be a CNCF project. So, so that they've asked to, to have a discussion. Um, uh, good. So a couple of topics for today. We'll see if uh, maybe a couple of others don't come up. Um, one of them uh, I'm going to be addressing opportunistically because Nikolai is here. So I have an, an update. Uh, the first one is um, in, in general. Um, so we've been having, I think it was two service mesh working group meetings that we had had during this time. We didn't meet um, a couple of weeks ago on October 1st. But one of the topics that we had had during the service mesh working group um, discussions was about SMI conformance. Um, and actually I got these out of order, so SMI conformance. Um, but one of those was also on service mesh patterns. So there's a spreadsheet here that um, hopefully all of you can get to uh, that has a, a list of around 60 patterns that are, I, have been identified as well, um, common ways of either, well, of either configuring, operating, deploying, um, and then sort of on, you know, do, doing things uh, of management around service meshes and their workloads. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that, that we do in general um, in this SIG and others is try to help uh, curate and promote um, cloud native technologies um, and some best practices around them. Sometimes those, that effort comes out, manifests itself by way of white papers or or talks or other things. So within the service mesh working group, this list has been formed and, um, and there's just a general call for solicitation for comment um, on whether or not you consider that there are some missing or some that are just duplicative. Um, or if you, or some that maybe augment existing patterns that, that are present but maybe, it, but rightfully sort of address those patterns in a different way, in a service mesh way. So if you would give it a thought, um, some comments would be helpful at some point. Um, I don't know that there's a, a white paper um, here um, included in this effort, but at some point, um, a lot of details about each of these patterns will be made, um, probably some illustrations about them uh, and so, and also some ways to like quickly deploy those. Um, the next topic up, um, well, um, Nikolai, you and I were just talking about this a little bit ago. Um, there's a new uh, on SMI conformance, um, and to kind of bring everyone else into the same conversation, um, and, and bring everyone else up to speed on the latest release of the world's, late, the world's latest service mesh. Um, I don't recall if this had happened since the la in the last time that we had met, but um, Nginx service mesh or the other NSM, as I like to uh, refer to it, or N NSM2, uh, has, has been announced and is out. And so um, has anyone, is that, is that a topic of interest, just that service mesh in general? Is that a topic of interest to anyone, um, Nginx service mesh? Yeah, I mean, that was actually uh, one of my com comments on the previous, uh, like, I understand that Envoy today is considered to be the de facto standard data plane for the service meshes. But should we like kind of limit ourselves by putting it in the you know this uh, how to say foundational documents like patterns let's say um, so for example as you say <laughs> nginx now so uh, it will probably be completely different beast like uh, we would support xds. Uh, Right. And speaking of which, does anybody actually know someone that we could have a friendly conversation with Nginx about, given that they're 
about two years late to acronym stomping. <laughs> um, and and, and I, I, I'm not really interested in getting into a fight over it, but my guess is it never really occurred to anyone, but there's lots of existing collateral, including a, a whole bunch of NSM domains with the acronym that are pointing to, you know, the, the, the one true original network service mesh. Um, so, um, I, like I, I said, not, yeah, if, if you could just try and connect me, that would be fantastic. Um, Cause like I said, not super interested in fighting about it, but you know, probably worth a discussion. Um, yeah, it probably is. As a matter of fact, um, it might even be, not only will I I'll connect you, but, but I might also invite, um, invite them to this call um, if it's of interest to folks um, in part because, well, in part because it's just of general interest to the Service Mesh Working Group, um, but it's also that um, their, their REST API is um, based on SMI. And as such, um, you know, should be SMI conformant, um, and so that that really they may want to participate in this this series of uh, conformance tests. Uh, and so, yeah, the, I spent um, I've had a, a couple of conversations over the last three four months now with the product manager of the Nginx Service Mesh. Um, Alan is his first name, um, uh, and. I had mentioned it um, maybe two months ago, but I think it was mentioned in such a, a jovial way that there wasn't much of a comment about the fact that there was um, overlap. So yeah. I, um, yeah, I mean, I, my experience has been that the, these are super easy discussions to have if everybody's coming at it in good faith. Doesn't mean you always agree, but, but you can make the discussions very easy. Um, Nikolai, to, to your um, point earlier, I, I think I missed part of what you, you'd said, but it, there was, you're sort of floating around the notion that like, hey, Envoy has been fairly ubiquitously adopted, um, and yet there are other proxies that are, that are out there. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, when you open the first link, service mesh patterns, <clears throat> there are mentions of Envoy in the topics, in, in the topics column. Uh, and I mean, I don't want to sound picky about this, but when we talk about patterns, I'd prefer to mention specific implementations. That's a great comment. I I agree. Um, uh, on the right, uh, on I, the topic C. Column C. Yeah, I, 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 I tend to strongly, strongly back that. And, um, and I'm a huge Envoy supporter. It's just welding is usually not good um, because all technology eventually gets old. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if, if you're aware of this project, but there is this project called MOSN. It originates from China, and it actually implements the XDS protocol to some extent, and it's all entirely written in Go. There, there are a couple of them. I, I don't know if they implement XDS, but I know the Trafic guys have done some interesting stuff. The Linkerd guys, if I recall correctly, have their own yep. uh, proxy yep. implementation. Mm -hmm. Um, that there, there's certainly a lot of different approaches to all of this that folks are taking. And I, I think it's probably in everyone's best interest um, to, to keep it a little bit generic. Um, now, the, the question of whether or not you want to write XDS in, that's a different matter because I tend to see XDS as essentially an emerging standard that has come out of Envoy. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's UDPA. It, which, it still doesn't mean you want to break it into the into the to your standardization because you may not want to, but it certainly <laughs> means that it's a distinct conversation. Mm -hmm. That's a great, um, great commentary. Um, I, I I agree. As a matter of fact, on any number of occasions, that's that that very thing has flustered me. Actually, specifically with Envoy, um, in part because it's not just. Um, the Golang-based um, uh, Chinese project, um, of which there are a couple. They've, they've um, yeah, the one that you're mentioning that was kind of primarily backed by Ant Financial. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a, a couple of other times, I think four other times that have been demonstrated that um, you could, like Istio specifically, could be run as a control plane over um, yep. Yep. different proxies. Mm -hmm. And so, I follow that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, the other one that I'm always mindful of with things like this, and I'm sure folks have been on the receiving end of this before too, is 
I've occasionally had been involved with situations where you're responding to some RFP where someone has to meet a standard and the standard got written with a technology that was a good idea at the time and mm -hmm. is now required. It is also known to be a gaping security hole and a performance pig. Um, and so you literally have to go write things that suck just to be able to address the RFP. And I don't ever think we're going to get to specifically that scenario um, with, with Envoy. I mean, it's a pretty healthy community. It's a pretty cool platform, but it, it just sort of drives home why you don't want to do silly things like that. Um, on the topic of, of SMI, so, so an SMI conformance, um, there, uh, I'm not sure how many service meshes um, are SMI conformant or SMI compliant, uh, but there, there's a number of them. And, and so we've discussed the conformance tests that, that are to run um, to, assert, you know, to, to prove that that is the case. Um, Nikolai, um, specifically as it pertains to like um, where that set of work kind of falls in the priority order of uh, sort of the, the bucket list, so to speak, for um, Kuma specifically, um, I, I wanted to make sure I, I delivered on my, my promise and, and it was, uh, there was a, a contributor in the, well, actually that's kind of gone across a lot of the service mesh communities. Um, Tarun is his first name. I had uh, touched base with him and he had been quite interested to assist um, in context of Kuma and SMI conformance. So I, this is, this is yeah, me holding yeah, myself yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we should get in touch probably offline uh, and see how we can move on that. Nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, in general, of course, I mean, SMI is accepted since, since yeah, obviously it's uh, kind of getting to to be the standard of the interface in the service meshes. Um, although, I mean, as, as with uh, all abstractions, like the more abstractions you build on one on top of the other, the less like fine tunings you lose. <laughs> I mean, the less fine tunings you have, okay, the, the more fine tunings you lose. So, uh, yeah. You, speaking of abstractions and and uh, XDS, the the working group there, the universe was it the Universal Data Plane API yeah. working group. Um, UDPA, yeah. Is, is anyone? And it's unfortunate that uh, Matt isn't on, but is anyone familiar with other implementations of that API? Um, and, and I. This is probably, a, um, if I think about it for a moment, it's probably an, an ignorant question because um, like K Kuma, for example, um, Nikolai, like the yep. control plane there, it uses XDS, it uses, I'm using XDS synonymously with. The, that yeah, one. we are still on, on the V2 of the API uh, and it's becoming obsolete by the end of the year. So we have in our plans to move to V3 which is, from what I know, much closer to the UDPA. Uh, so, yeah. No, UDPA would be XDS V3 or something. Yes. I guess well, while I'm soliciting interest on various topics, um, one of those <laughs> is, uh, is I, brought the, I brought the topic of proxyless service mesh, a, a couple of- Yeah, uh, I saw it in, in the patterns. That's, that's definitely something really interesting. I mean, uh, the fact is that the very first pitches of the service mesh the concept was were about, okay, you need this proxy because otherwise you have to re-implement this over and over again in various languages, in your microservices. And then, <laughs> yeah, and now we're yeah, saying, no, I mean, oh, okay. You see, the, the, the famous Phil Casado article, which literally said, and then we tried doing this with libraries and here are all the reasons that went badly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so I, I thought I'd bring it up to set, to ask if uh, well, one, it's good to hear the opinions, and then uh, two is if uh, a presentation from that group might be of interest here. Of course. Okay, just to hear the. I mean, being a networking engineer for so many years, the fact that I have to use IP tables to just get my packets through the proxy, it's driving me crazy. I mean, like, you yeah, have two it, it, containers <laughs> sitting side by side, and instead of having some same, like, packet passing in between them, they go to the kernel and back just to... I'm working yeah. on it, man. I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, literally. I, I, I've finally got a guy on the VPP um, integration with... Um, on the VPP integration with Envoy. And if that yeah, actually yeah. ends up working out, then, then something very much like this could be done. Um, there was a talk course. actually at, at EnvoyCon a couple of hours ago. Mm -hmm. uh, v, VPP and Envoy. At, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Florin. Florin's fantastic. Very yeah. bright guy. Um, he's actually probably the brightest coder for his age I've ever met. Okay, that's promising. <laughs> very promising. He's young, though. He's super young. So, um, Ed, actually, if I could entice you to, to say more about uh, that effort, that project or that effort. Like, what? At a very high level, Florence, the guy who's actually down in the, in the code, but um, VPP has an extraordinarily highly scalable, highly performant TCP stack built into it. Um, it also has a quick stack. Um, and effectively, what it can do is completely bypass the kernel entirely for your TCP and quick needs. Um, which has incredible potentials to speed up things and, and reduce resources. And one of my colleagues has been working on um, trying to do VPP integration with Envoy so you could run Envoy without having to have any of that network traffic go to the stack at all. Um, and it's, it's a super interesting set of work. Um, he's been working with the upstream Envoy community, apparently happily. Um, I've been hearing good things. Um, primarily around trying to sort of introduce the right modularity points into Envoy so that this can be done in a clean and sane way instead of just forking, which is a nonsensical approach to the problem. But it opens up a whole lot of possible ways to, um, to do this sort of thing um, because you could then, as you said, you, should, you could sort of do things in a direct fashion uh, shared memory to shared memory. So you're doing networking at the speed of the PCI bus, uh, the memory bus rather, rather than having to syscall through the kernel, which could be huge advantages. And this could also be super interesting um, in, in conjunction with another thing I've been playing with recently, which is I've, I've actually got a library that will, if you're using gRPC over Unix file descriptors, or you start Unix file sockets, I have a library now that will let you pass files over those with gRPC so that you could say, okay, I'm going to create a shared memory region over here in Envoy, which is just specifically where I'm going to have data written for connections coming from this thing. And you could set that up with gRPC using a Unix file socket and just do memory to memory behaviors. Um, am I, is a possible use case for that capability, something like the ability to dynamically load and maybe unload Envoy filters um, to the extent that uh, to the extent that um, that would be a transport mechanism for getting a, a compiled Envoy filter over you know like into Envoy itself oh that's um, interesting um, yeah if you if you you'd want to be super cautious about the security on that front um, but yeah something like that could quite quite easily be done um, so the, 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 there's a lot of interesting possibilities once you get to that stage where you actually have a structured way to dynamically set up shared memory between a pod that didn't exist before and an envoy that might not even have existed when the pod started. Um, you know, so you don't have to, to bind the life cycles together. Um, and you can, in the same way, set up um, controlled memory sharing. And by controlled memory sharing, what I literally mean is I have allocated this section of memory particularly for this client. Not that he has general access, that client has general access to all of my memory. Mm. So yeah, lots of cool shit becomes possible at that stage. Um, 
but I, I feel like I may be hijacking your meeting uh, with technical minutia. Yeah, we, that was, this is, unless anyone has something else, like I, um, that's super interesting to me. Um, is the effort that uh, Florin is, so, so he's within the intent-based networking group at Cisco, FDIO. And it is uh, I, I, I don't, I'm kind of post-organizational, so I don't track very well sort of what orgs people have landed in recently. Um, but yeah, he's, he's done a lot of stuff in the past. He's sort of the guy looking after the VPP TCP stack right now. Can we invite him to this call sometime later? Uh, I, I would be delighted to convey that invitation. And he's quite a good speaker and a hell of a nice guy. What else? What else do we have? Um, Ken, uh, if you don't, I don't know if you can speak to this, this, this is great, but if, if you can't, um, that's fine. I'm uh, curious as to whether or not we talk a lot about meshy things on this call and, and uh, at uh, MasterCard, are service meshes a thing? Are you guys deploying and running those things? Uh, yeah, it definitely is a thing. And um, we have a couple of different um, efforts underway, mostly around like security and policy type of aspects of it. And so um, not a whole lot I can really go into in detail there, but we are um, you know, definitely involved in, in a couple of different aspects of service discovery and tying it back into security policies that we're defining across the globe. Trying to think, I'm trying to f formulate a, a follow-up question that isn't too uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> inquisitive. Yeah, no, no, got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, well, let me ask: the, of the, do you know of the investigations that are going on there? Is that on a has the the service mesh of choice been been made, or is is part of that proof of concepts um, across different ones? Uh, so we were pretty. We made a decision to go with um, Istio, uh, but as with you know most things in in financial services, we're going to evaluate multiple service meshes before we make a final decision. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, very good. Uh, any, any uh, from a policy side of things, it might be interesting to note that we're looking at. Um, you know, OPA pretty heavily right now. Um, and is, did you recollect if that uh, the investigation into OPA for policy is, is that it sort of in combination with um, the service mesh effort or are those two different tracks? No, it's, it's definitely related to it for sure. Uh, so to and, our, and our use case without, you know, giving too much detail, it's, you know, I think it's probably pretty obvious, but, you know, we are, um, you know, we, we kind of connect the merchants to the banks, sort of our business model. And um, so a lot of what we're doing to do with, you know, how do we connect, um, you know, secure transactions across different regions of the world that we're sitting in and connect them securely back to the banks. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Without putting, well, let me, let me put Daniel and, and Thomas on the spot for a moment and, and just ask if there's any top of mind items for, for either of the two of you. And if not, that's, that's fine. Just. Um, from, from my side. Um, so uh, we've been working a lot on the network service mesh effort 
uh, on deployment of using it inside of our network for some of our network characteristics or network behaviors. Um, we made good progress, so we might update. Actually, I did updates of this a while ago on on light reading or something. So I, I can go of this. I can I could follow up. Um, I'm really interested um, in the UDPA effort, um, trying to normalize the way and have our applications can make requests for something like this. That's something that makes it more like a universal uh, of how we make the application requests. Uh, one thing we're really also interesting, and this is where the proxy or proxyless functions comes in, is uh, we are doing a lot of effort of trying to get better behavior, network be patterns out of the applications and vice versa. How can an application make requests or uh, define its requirements from the network perspective in a seamless way and vice versa. And it's there and there there's a, where we're actually looking at how can we do it on a, either in a proxy mode, like leveraging Envoy or others, or just trying to push this to a, like a forwarder like NSM. So um, that's the ongoing work. And just just to clarify, that's that's NSM, the network service mesh, right? Not. Uh... Yes. No. No. I, I I've I've stuck my my the two years old NSM uh, acronym. So I'm I'm, 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 I'm keeping yesterday. this one. So uh, I will refer to Nginx service mesh as an Nginx service mesh. So I will let Ed discuss the <laughs> that, that part of the. So. Uh, it just feels yeah. good to Raz, to Raz Ed, that that's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> I mean, please note, like these conversations aren't always successful. I, I had a similar one when someone decided to go and open source, open switch. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, that basically- <laughs> Some people use, you we, just can't reach. Um. <laughs> so, uh, by, so going back, so I, we do have a lot of work ongoing with Network Service Mesh, uh, trying uh, also to uh, look at um, um, augmenting, like adding more capabilities of the application awareness so that we can create those patterns. That's something which uh, there's a working group in ITF, which is called application aware networking. And um, it's a lot of fun to think about protocols and uh, new extensions to standards. But I'd like, if we go to cloud, I'd like, I think there's plumbing that can be done without having to go to a, three years or so of RSC to be able to do the same thing. So I, that's why I'm right. Why are you getting this done in three years? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, faster than usual. That's, uh, that's something I, that interests I, me a lot. So yeah, I, I, I once pitched a solution, pitched a solution to a problem at somebody where they, I went into a meeting and everybody savaged my idea. And I, I said, look, this is all true. And you've missed the five things that suck worst about this idea, but it is literally the only idea on the table that can be deployed in under five years. <laughs> yes, so uh, that's, what, that's, that's where we're at. Um, on the various versions of, if you don't think about service mesh, the other various versions of, uh, of service meshes that we, we have looked at or we have, well, we have a lot of deployments using Istio. Not necessarily because Istio is the right one, it's because most of the time the one that comes prepackaged and managed in a, like in a cloud platform is the one, is this one. So, uh, we're already trying hard to figure out a way to make uh, uh, platforms be more agnostic to networking CNI, platforms being more agnostic to service meshes, and so that we can actually have a good view of what we can deploy. So that's ongoing work. Um, uh, thanks for this, Daniel. I was um, curious if you can say a little bit more about the application aware networking, um, the, the, uh, the approach to that. Is that so just is it just to focus on um, sort of protocol specific filters, or is there, is there more to it than? So there's a lot of angles. There's a if you go from the ITF perspective, most of it is around can we do like something with an an IP packet or a header that gives us get, gives the intent of what needs to be happening for an application, and then the network behaves based on this. That's the traditional protocol view of something. But if you start to look more like uh, annotations or labels or whatever we have, uh, selectors we have in, in, in cloud, I think there's a way of doing it without having to add another protocol. I think there's ways of doing it from like a more metadata type information. 
so uh, that's my angle to it. Uh, but the application networking right now is mostly uh, focused on uh, how do we do the extensions as a, as a protocol layer. For example, having a pod that injects something into a not by up header in IPv6, so that then gets tied back and remapped into into the network behavior. So that's the standard way of thinking things. Me, I'm kind of more the proponent of, uh, well, if I have something I can do like NSM that makes that request independently of the protocol underneath and can just make that request and let, let the network figure out, like this protocol stacks figure out, I'm, I'm kind of more inclined towards this. So that's why I've, I've, I'm bringing the mess into that program, so. I, I, I think you said mess, but I heard you say mesh. Yeah, I, I, I like to think of myself as being disruptive over time. So <laughs> can I be disruptive there as well? So, um, so quick question, guys. I, I, I pinged Florin, and, and he's perfectly delighted to come talk to us at some point. But he's sort of wondering uh, questions like when, what type of meeting, how many minutes, what kind of things are you looking for as an audience, that kind of thing. You know, the reasonable questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, how dare he? Um, I think, I think we, have, we have availability on the schedule for, you know, the one, two weeks from now. And, uh, okay, so the 29th. Th this is just, please anyone else um, comment here, just, you know, for, for, for my part, like in some respects, the, the short version of of this talk is kind of, especially if it's a 10 minute talk, like this is, uh, you know, um, the, and the ability to sort of a ask him in and around where, where that's headed and, and. Yeah, Q and A is probably the most important. <laughs> like we need at least 10, 15 minutes Q and A just, just, just to be able to, to get into a little more details. Right? So I, I think that I'm, what I'm, the ask I'm hearing is just to sort of rerun with this group the talk that he gave to Envoy Khan, but with an extended period for Q&A. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Yeah, cool. Good. So uh, Daniel, to follow on um, that, that last conversation about application aware networking, um, the part of the, I don't, I don't, part of the uh, perspective from which I've been considering um, these types of capabilities have been, well, Envoy filter, well, WebAssembly centric in nature and sort of Envoy filter um, or in context of Envoy filters. Um, they don't have to be Envoy actually filters actually, but the so the the link to this image hub is a, it's a sample application that um, was presented at DockerCon and is just a actually we we delivered some advanced Istio training through O'Reilly um, yesterday and uh, used this sample app to help enlighten um, students of the course about possibilities application centric po possibilities about how, about the intelligence of the data plane and uh, maybe some application infrastructure if i can use if i can use that term application level infrastructure that can be handed off to intelligent filters and i'll clarify and differentiate between sort of um the the um distributed systems infrastructure concerns that melt off, melt off of application code when deployed on a service mesh. I think that there's a lot of value and promise in a service mesh in that regard. If you take that one step further and say, not only can you hand off, can developers and the application code hand off retries and some circuit breaking and yada yada and, and so on to the infrastructure, to the service mesh layer, but so too can they potentially hand off some other application infrastructure. And by that, I mean, you know, anytime that you're writing an app, you often, if it's a multi-user app, you have to have accounts um, and tenants. And um, you, you, a lot of, sometimes you use a framework to help you get through some of that monotony quickly. But a lot of times that, that's written into your application code and it's got nothing to do with the actual app. That's just user accounts and tenants and, 
subscription plans, if you have a SaaS, uh, like that's a lot of code that's being repeated and repeated and repeated. And there's some aspects of that that can be handled um, by an intelligent data plane. And that, that's what Image Hub explores is, um, so, so I, don't, I don't know if that marries up at all with the perspectives from which, you know, the working group that, you, you know, the IETF and some of the discussions that were being had there, um, or not, I don't know. Is, if, does that sound totally different? I think one of the use cases that you, oh, Daniel's not with us. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we've got a couple of folks to invite to the call um, next. So it looks like, sounds like uh, Florin is probably a go. We'll get um, Ed connected with, with Alan of, of Nginx. Uh, we will, Nikolai, I'm, I'm holding myself to following up with you on, on SMI conformance and trying to get, bring some resources to you, I think is kind of the, the way I think of it. Mm -hmm. And then gents, um, any, any other items or other groups that you think, so, so yeah, we, we did talk about the po possibly asking the Anthos team to come and uh, take some harass or, or not come and present um, proxy list service mesh and sort of uh, discuss that in context of it being a pattern an implementation pattern yeah. yeah would be an interesting discussion I'm sure um, uh, anyone in, in contact with the, with folks on this team Um, I'll go make some new friends. Very good. Um, gents, anything else we want to talk about today? What about Submariner? We kind of skipped through it like, yeah, next time. The, it's, a, it's sort of a quick note that um, the team of maintainers there were asking for, were, were reaching out for a conversation. I, I oh. Privately, I think to um, in advance of, I think they're reaching out for a conversation. I assume in context of thinking about uh, coming into the CNCF. Yeah, they, they didn't they didn't say, but I, I, yeah. and so um, yeah. fair enough. Anybody? Uh, well, not that anyone. Um, for the first time. For the first time, I think in my life, I, uh, well, I, I ended up reneging on a, an accepted talk. So for Service Mesh Con, uh, they sent out the acceptances this last Friday and the recorded talks are due this Friday and there ain't no way that was gonna happen. So I turned that one back. Yeah, I, I did this, this pre-recorded months ahead of time is really getting to me as well. I mean, I, we've got a little bit more time than that for, um, KubeCon. for KubeCon, a little bit more lead time, but it's, it's brutal. Um, plus, I mean, admittedly, that's partially because of personal habits, like the fact that the vast majority of my conference talks are written at 3 a.m. the day of, um, but still. <laughs> yeah. So if you ever look at my slides and, and say to yourself, that looks like if it was written by somebody who hadn't gotten enough sleep. Yeah, that, that's actually true. Uh, I was uh, recording for Open Source Summit this last weekend, and that's what I told to the person that was there for, for the video recording. Like, you know, in the end, going live is so much easier. I mean, I don't, I don't know why, but it, at least for me, it was, it was easier. You just prepare, you go and talk, and then you meet people. Yeah, I, I, I think I I, I, I'm a hundred percent with you there. I, I just, I, 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 I do actually miss live events. I don't miss the travel involved with them. I'm not a happy traveler, but I do miss seeing people. I do miss giving live talks, all the sort of stuff that's attendant to live events that doesn't involve an airplane. 
Yeah, and Nicola, um, are you able to share what the title of your talk is or, or what you're speaking on? It's a 10 minute lightning talk. I will, I will put it in the notes here. It's, uh, yeah. Oh, nice. It's about okay. Kuma. Kuma. Um, <laughs> That's what I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, very good. Well, I'm, to, I guess to, to each of your points, um, there's, a, there's a short talk that, I, that I'm giving, and it's on um, it being a multi mesh world. So, to your points about calling out specific technologies, I'm, I'm keeping the faith and trying not to, to do that. Um, and so, normally at Nikolai, I'd say, well, hey, I'll see you at the, the summit. But, uh, <sighs> Well, th th thanks very much, all. Um, see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you, guys. Bye, oh, Thomas. One quick thing, yep. just before you drop off, uh, Florian Koras has agreed to come next to the next meeting and talk. If you want to do that, yeah, let's just let's so, let's solidify. Adam, do the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Adam. Oh, my pleasure. I, it's exactly my kind of thing. You do live arrangements during the meeting over I am. I mean, you are actually productive on the okay. Actually, right, so we've got a couple of items. I, I do realize it violates all the rules of meetings, but still. Yeah. <laughs> all right, fair enough. See you in a couple of weeks. Talk to you later. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Thomas. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.